Reaching across humanity and history, there has been a tightly wound cord of language binding together words that mean air, breath, or spirit. Pneuma in Greek, Ruach in Hebrew, Prana in Sanskrit, Emi in Yoruba, and She in Mandarin, just to name a few. In English, the word inspiration grows from the same linguistic roots. The Latin word inspirare, which means to breathe into, was used to describe the belief that the divine breathed life, or spirit, into human beings, and through this breath, people were motivated to create and achieve remarkable things. Of course, today we see inspiration not just as coming from God, but from other people as well. We breathe in their spirit, their experiences, their ideas, their words, their art, and we create something new. Not all inspiration is equal, however. We've all seen our fair share of work that looks or feels derivative, empty, and lifeless. It's not surprising we have a contrasting word for this, uninspired. But it's the authentic and deeply breathed inspiration that makes the 2020 science fiction series Tales from the Loop so extraordinary. Unlike many page-to-screen adaptations, the show isn't based on a best-selling novel or a classic comic book story arc. Instead, Tales from the Loop is adapted from an art book of the same name by Swedish artist Simon Stulenhag. The book, first published in 2014, is a compilation of paintings depicting a series of vignettes in a remote pastoral Swedish town. A town that just so happens to have a massive and revolutionary particle accelerator running underneath the ground. The Loop. If you think this sounds like a piece of near-future sci-fi, you'd only be half right, because Tales from the Loop is actually set in an alternate history, one in which a few select scientific discoveries found in the aftermath of World War II propelled technological progress forward in some arenas, but decidedly not in others. This creates the imaginative canvas on which Stuhlenhag's world comes to life. His paintings often feature idyllic landscapes populated with retro 1980s cars and houses, juxtaposed with bizarre machines and futuristic robots. The result is a world that feels both familiar and alien, mundane and fantastical. In an interview with The Guardian, Stuhlenhag acknowledges the surreal yet warm setting of Tales from the Loop, which defies conventional science fiction genre classifications. The difference between dystopia and futurism, for me, Stuhlenhag says, is that there's hot chocolate waiting for you at home in my world. Despite the distinctive mood that permeates Stuhlenhag's book, its story is, at most, a recollection of anecdotes from the narrator's childhood. There are no protagonists. There is no overarching narrative. So how does someone go about adapting such a work into a television series? a genre that fundamentally requires structured storytelling. Writer and showrunner Nathaniel Halpern had a vision for remaining faithful to Stuhlenhag's aesthetic while also drawing inspiration from a literary kindred spirit, Sherwood Anderson's 1919 book, Winesburg, Ohio, A Group of Tales of Ohio's Small Town Life. As its full title suggests, Winesburg, Ohio can't be properly classified as a novel, but Neither is it simply a short story collection. The book is often described as a short story cycle, tales set in one small town as the lives of its residents intersect. Winesburg, Ohio's influence is clear in the narrative structure of Tales from the Loop. The show is not a serialized series, but it's not an anthology either. Instead, Halpern's tales are a strange fusion, not unlike Stuhlenhag's paintings. In the show, we're introduced to a cast of characters who, from episode to episode, either step into the limelight or fade into the background. For Halpern, this unique storytelling design was the most meaningful approach to bringing Tales from the Loop to life. In an interview with Forbes, Halpern explains, When you look at Simon's work, each painting has what you need as a science fiction element in an ordinary landscape. And with each painting you look at, the sense of wonder is reset. The problem with television 
is you can get a little too comfortable and get too used to those elements. So, on the one hand, I want to introduce a new science fiction element every episode, so you never get to the I get it moment. There's always something new around the corner that'll reset the wonder. But the other hand, and more important reason for the structure, is that there's just a beautiful alchemy to the storytelling of an ordinary person we can relate to who encounters something extraordinary and then goes on a journey. But the problem once again in television is, when too many extraordinary things happen to an ordinary person, they're no longer relatable. They've gone on too many adventures. That was how I knew I wanted to always keep that balance while resetting the wonder. Never losing that balance of storytelling, so it always stays fresh and emotional. Thus, Tales from the Loop uses several character threads to weave a tapestry of themes that are rooted in relatable human experience. The premiere episode, Loop, insightfully looks at childhood trauma and its persistence into adulthood. Transpose probes feelings of envy and regret. Stasis examines the fleeting nature of time and lost moments. Echosphere poignantly delves into illness, death, and grief. Control wrestles with, well, control. Our lack of it and the desperate ways in which we compensate for our insecurities. Parallel creatively poses a question we've probably all asked ourselves at some point. What would my life look like now if I had taken a different path in the past? Enemies engages with otherness and ostracization, and home reflects on the whole mysterious scope of life. I, uh, finished. What did you think? It was sad. And beautiful. Sure. That too. The beauty behind Tales from the Loop's inspiration is how it can inspire us in turn. Perhaps not as creative motivation to fill a blank page with words, or sit down at a clean canvas, or get behind a camera lens, but to cultivate the craft of living to more deeply contemplate how, moment by moment, and year by year, we make paintings of our own lives, and add color to the lives of others, remembering the past while envisioning the future.